And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company when a day's journey, and they saw him among their king's folk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both here and them, and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, <clears throat> How is it that you sought me? Wish ye not that I must be a mal? My father's business, and they understood not the same which he spoke unto them. And I went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all the saints in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and Man, I want to say this up front to us. Maybe there's somebody who is listening to me online. Maybe somebody is here. Please, I want your ears of the spirit to be opened. A kingdom business is the father of all businesses. Kingdom business. The work of the kingdom, the business of the kingdom, is the father. It tops them all. The father of every business. Bible makes us understand in this word of scripture that we just read that uh, there was a feast in Jerusalem, and uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus was taken there. To participate, his father Joseph and Mary walked in the company of others to go attend the feast. And uh, when they got there, I'm talking about a 12-year-old in the company of, his, of adults. And when they got there, and it was about time for them to come back home, a 12-year-old Jesus decided not to go back home with his parents. Bible said he stood behind. Then verse 43, verse 43 of the scripture, Jesus stood behind. Jesus tarried behind. And uh, the company that brought him to Jerusalem had traveled a whole day forgetting that there was a 12-year-old boy who was missing. <laughs> and the uh, Bible makes us understand that they went through so much pain in trying to seek him, and they had to go back and uh, try to fish him out of the multitude. Now, a 12-year-old in the company of his parents decided to do what his parents are not asking to do. I'm talking about a young man decided to go a different route from the route that his parents were traveling. Bible says he tarried behind. Another translation says he stayed behind. In other words, he stayed away from them. To do something else. Hmm. To do something else. Now, staying behind does not mean that Jesus was disrespectful to his parents. Because Jesus stayed behind. It was, does not mean that he was rebellious. No. It, it, it does not mean that Jesus was, was disobedient. That single 
move that Jesus made was not disobedience, but obedience to the Father who sent him. The scripture said, his father. Yeah, if you, if you look at the, the, how that word is written, it's a, a, a small f. But there is a father, yeah, who sent Jesus to this world to carry out a special assignment. So, Jesus was not disobedient to anybody. But he was just obedient to the invisible, immortal father who sent him. Several times in the scripture, Jesus Christ will tell a crowd of people he was talking to, he was ministering to, will tell them that, don't you understand that I'm here to do the work of the father who sent me? Now, when Jesus was talking about the father, Jesus was not talking about the biological father, Joseph. Jesus was talking about the father of all fathers. Yeah. So, Jesus tarried behind because Jesus understood that he came here for a specific assignment. He came here for a specific purpose. Usually men and women who know why they are here. Men and women who know the kind of assignment that God has given them in life will have no problem succeeding. People who have run into failures in life are people who do not know why they are here and they do not know for what purpose they are here. Jesus knew why he was here. And Jesus made it very clear to everybody who was interested to hear that uh, I'm here for a special assignment. I'm here. Now listen to me. Bible says Jesus tarried behind. Bible says Jesus tarried behind. His parents, I want you to look at it from this perspective. His parents were doing something else. Mm. But Jesus was doing something else. Yeah. Listen to me. Salvation, that is coming to the revelation knowledge of God, or us giving our lives to God, is an individual thing. Yeah. I cannot be saved for my wife. My wife cannot be saved for me. I am not going to be saved for my children. You cannot be saved for your spouse. You are saved for yourself. It's an individual thing. There's nothing like, oh, I am born again because I am born again for my children who are not born again. No. Salvation is, is individualistic. Apostle Paul made that clear to the church in Philippi, Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Uh, Apostle Paul said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, you and I understand that salvation is individualistic. In Romans chapter 2 verse 6, the Bible says, God will render to every man according to his deeds, your deeds, not the deeds of somebody else. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, know, you see, not, not, not the, God is not concerned about the deeds of somebody else as a regard of you. You work out your salvation yourself. You want to pray? And your partner is not ready to pray. Understand that the father's business is personal. As salvation is personal, <laughs> the father's business is personal. Yeah. Jesus Christ tarried. <laughs> Jesus guys tarried behind and Jesus made them understand when they came to him. Jesus said, don't you understand that I am about my father's business? 
I didn't come here to make anybody like me. I didn't come here to impress anybody. I didn't come here for anybody to sing my praises. Jesus said, don't you understand, mommy, daddy, that I am about my father's business? This is my father's business. So, 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 so if salvation is, is, is an individual approach, so is the kingdom business. It's personal. You are connecting to God on the altar of prayer. And you have a partner who does not even want to open the Bible to read it one day. Don't forget, just keep on doing your business. It's your father's business. Don't let anybody distract you. Don't let anybody dissuade you. Don't let the actions of others discourage you. This is your father's business. This is your father's business. God is leading you to give out of what you have. And your partner is slowing you down. Listen to me. It is your race to run. <laughs> it is individualistic. So you better go ahead and do it because it is my father's business. You want to roll on the ground and just spend your time worshiping and praising God. And somebody is trying to hold you back and asking you, are you the one who killed Jesus? Understand that this is about the father's business. It is an individual race that you run by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Always remember that. Jesus said, don't you understand? <laughs> I mean, a 12-year-old was talking to his parents and, and asking, don't you understand? I didn't come here to joke around. I'm not here to fool around. I am here for my father's business. For my father's business. Mm. Yes. Luke chapter 2 verse 49. I want you to put that scripture. Put that, put that scripture. Put that scripture, please. I want us to, 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 to read that verse. Read that verse. Let's, let's read this verse together. One, two, and go. And he said unto them. <laughs> I must be about my father's business. 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 Yeah. Jesus said it's business. Why business? What, what kind of business are we talking about? Are we talking about buying and selling? No. Are we talking about profiteering and getting gains? No. Kingdom business is a business you do so that your business is taken care of by the owner of life's business. You don't understand what I said. Let me say it again. Kingdom business is a business you do or you run so that your business or your businesses are taken care of by the owner of life's businesses. And God of heaven is the owner of life's businesses. So it is about the business of God. It is not just about being a busy body for God, but it's about doing the right thing at the right time for the right people. It is about impacting lives. It is about changing lives. It is about making every walk you walk count as a blessing. Every talk you talk count as a blessing. Every hand you raise up in worship count as a blessing. That is what we are talking about. It is about my father's business. Jesus had to remind them. Uh, there are some of us here you have to remind some people who are trying to distract or deceive you and tell them that you, this is about my father's business. It is not about a man, it is not about a woman, it is not about a church, it is not about an institution. It is about my life, 
My life is connected to the business of the kingdom. If I'm disconnected, I am disconnected. If I don't do this work, I am disconnected. Jesus said, don't you understand? All I am about, listen, I have gotten to a point in my walk with God that there is nothing, no single thing, no single thing will distract me, no single thing will detach me from this kingdom work. Everything is all about God. It's all about the king and his kingdom. I am out about my father's business. I want you to boastfully tell the person next to you, say, I am about my father's business. Church of the living God. Now let me tell you something this morning. When you take care of God's work, it takes care of you. When you are faithful to God's business, he is faithful to yours. When you are committed to God's business, he is committed to yours. It is why it's impossible for any weapon formed against you to prosper. That is why every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you have the power to condemn. That is why you can walk upon serpents and scorpions and over every power of darkness and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. That is why sickness can and now rest in your body if it comes it will go that is why you will not die but you will live to declare the glory of God and the land of the living that is why all of your children are always marked for signs and they are marked for wonders although the young lions do lack and suffer hunger but you will not lack any good thing because you are in the kingdom business that is why each time enemies rise like a flood the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against them that is why God is standing strong with you as your son and as your shield no good thing will he withhold from you as you walk uprightly and as you do the kingdom business that is why he makes silver and gold available to you in Jerusalem take care of God's business my friends and God will take care of yours tell about 20 people say take care of God's business and God will surely take care of you. Hey. Don't you know that I am about the business of my father? That of the song that somebody needs to be singing from now on when you leave this place. When people start calling you, what are you doing in church? Why are you praying? Why are you giving? Why are you doing? Just sing it into their ears. Even if their ears are dumb, continue singing it because the ears will pop open. That don't you know that I am about my father's business. My father's business. Yeah. Everything you do for the kingdom it's about a father's business. Every dollar you give that you don't have, it's about the father's business. Every song of praise you sing, even when you are not in the mood to sing or to praise, every song you sing to heavens, even when challenging times are wrapping you around, every song of thanksgiving that you release to God when times are hard. And let me tell you something, it is the kingdom business and uh, you are taking care of it. God will take care of yours. God will take care of you. God will take care of your children. Listen, even when your eyes are far away from them, the only child that I have that I know what he is doing right now, where he is right now, is this one. The other two, I know where they are. 
but I don't know where what they are doing. I don't know who is fashioning trouble against them. But each time an attack comes on your business, on your children, on your home, on your destiny, God visits the business bank and sees how much deposit you have put in there. Yeah. He will take care of us. Don't you know I am about my father's business? Listen, church. Kingdom business is not just about giving money to the church. Although that is great. We just bought some musical instruments. We are spending $65,000 to upgrade. But we don't have $65,000, so we're doing it little by little. And we spent $10,000. It's the money that people gave. But do you know what? If we don't have speakers here, if we don't have the microphone, okay, if we don't have anybody playing the keyboard, God's business is still God's business. It is about my father's business. So, so, so kingdom business is not just about giving money to church. It is about giving of yourself to a cause that will help people who are giving up on life. Uh. Kingdom business is about giving yourself to this lofty and laudable cause that's going to help people who are already giving up on life and there are millions of people who woke up this morning they are like Elijah in 1 Kings 19. They want to kill themselves. They woke up in this city. And cities all around the world this morning. They have no hope. Kingdom business is all about taking care and impacting lives of people who are giving up life. Yeah. Yeah. Last Sunday, a brother told me, I was just discussing with the brother, as, uh, he was coming to take the offering now, uh, and I um, and was just discussing, and he said, he said, there's a lot of stuff on the social media, a lot of talk all around the world desecrating the church, desecrating men and women of God, desecrating the principle of God about giving, about paying your tithe and giving of your, your offerings. And he said, he said, people are confused. And I agree. And I agree. Because when you hear a lot of things about there is no God, all this word in the Bible is just, is just like James Hadley Chase. They are just fictions that I just put together by some, some people. When you keep hearing those things, you need to be very, very strong spiritually. Not to believe them, but to stick to the word. So when the brother was telling me, and I agreed with him, that yeah, it's true. That all these things you hear about, oh, why are you giving your tithe? Why are you going to church? Why are you doing this? Why are you serving God? Especially when those guys, those young people who took philosophy in college. <laughs> and they come back and teach in philosophy. Oh, there's no God. And I agreed with the brother. But a scripture came to mind. I didn't have time to. 
to say it to him. And this scripture came to mind. In Hebrews chapter 12, if there's anybody in this place, or maybe you're watching me online and people are trying the social media or the media, dissuading you, teaching you doctrines that are not in alignment with God of heaven, God of provision. You need to shut it out of your spirit. You can be like the Berean. The Bereans in the book of Acts, they searched the scriptures for themselves. Listen, if this man of God teaches something here on this pulpit, and it's not in alignment with the scripture, throw it away. But it will not happen. Because the Bible says, by the word was the world framed. We are framing destinies of men and women and children by the spoken word of God. So if there's something that is spoken or preached or taught here, and you find out that it's not in alignment with the word of the living God, discard it. But listen to me. But if you find it, that is in alignment with the word of the living God and you've not been doing it, do it. The scripture that came to mind, that brother who was talking about uh, confused, yes. Hebrews chapter 12, I want us to read from verse 22. Hebrews 12, 22, and I want us to read together, please. One, two, and go. But you are come unto Mount Zion. And unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Verse 28. Verse 28. This is what I want you to see, please. When somebody, when you are hearing all these things that distract and dissuade and discourage us. I want you to see this scripture. Let's read together. One, two, and go. Wherefore, we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and with godly fear. I want you to look at that word. There's another translation of verse 28 that says, the New Living Translation that says, since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. Listen to me, look at that word. Look at the word. It said, it said that we have received a kingdom that cannot be moved. Hey. Another translation said, we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. That is, we have received a kingdom that cannot be relocated or dislocated. We are, we are accepting a kingdom that stands true. And I want you to look at that word. It said it cannot be moved. Listen to me. People can say whatever they want to say. We are in a kingdom that cannot be moved. We are in a kingdom that cannot be shaken or rattled. We are in a kingdom that cannot be dislocated or relocated. No matter the intensity of the persecution of the church, People may be moved, but this kingdom cannot be moved. No matter how many people speak ill of the church, speak ill of pastors, speak ill of God, people may be moved, but the kingdom of God cannot be moved. No matter the lies and fabrications about the church, it is a kingdom that cannot be moved or people may be moved. No matter how many men of God act like God of men in arrogance and in arrogation, men may be moved, but the kingdom cannot be moved. The kingdom of God is the sunam bonam. It's a Latin word for total good, the highest value, above which there is no greater value or worth. The all 
ultimate the kingdom of God the kingdom business is the ultimate it is eternal it has no beginning it has no ending the kingdom began in eternity and consummates in eternity the kingdom of God is unshakable it is immovable it cannot be tainted it cannot be polluted it cannot be domesticated it cannot be controlled somebody say amen to that We get to a spot that I don't give a hoot what people say about what we do. Don't worry about that. Call me I am crazy. Call me that I am dumb. Call me stupid. I know what I am getting from the kingdom. What I get from the kingdom is not what my earthly father can give me. What I get from the kingdom is not what my earthly mother can give me. What I get from the kingdom is not what a president can give me. What I get from the kingdom is not what a lieutenant can give me. What I get from the kingdom is eternal. It is immovable. It is unshakable. Irreplaceable. It cannot be domesticated. And it cannot be controlled. Hey. And listen to me. Because you and I belong to that Sunam Banam. We belong there. Now we now understand through the word that the place we belong to cannot be moved. Then you know that you too cannot be moved. Lions may roar. Dogs may bark. Demons may threaten. But because you belong to a kingdom that cannot be moved, you cannot be moved. People may threaten. The government can threaten. Witches, wizards can threaten. But because I belong to an immovable kingdom, I cannot be moved. And listen to me. If you cannot be moved, there's no single weapon that can move your children, that can move your destiny. That can move your future. That can move your health. Because you belong to that kingdom that is unshakable. Immovable. It's about my father's business. This is about my father's business. And it's not about profiteering. It is not about buying and selling. It is not about getting gains. But it is about looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. It is every day just hooking up to him because he's the one who has said, I will not leave you and I will not forsake you. No man has ever said that. Even during weddings, during weddings, the man will say to the woman, the woman will say it back. And they said, there's, <laughs> there's a period here. Beautiful wedding. You see them. Beautiful wedding. They'll spend so much money. But they, both of them have already read the law. They know that in the state of Wisconsin, 30, 60 days, you can annul it without going to the judge. So people can tell you that I am standing with you. It is different from the promise that God gives. When God says, I'm standing with you, He's standing with you. And it's not standing ordinarily, sister. He is standing extraordinarily. Standing strong like the rock of Gibraltar. Kai. So anytime I think about somebody who is standing around me, standing, I know somebody got my back. Yes, sir. When I know that God has your back, what is it that you will fear? What is it that you're going to fear about your tomorrow? What is it that you want to fear about your children? This is about 
in father's business. And let me tell you something. People who have invested their time. You have invested your time. You have invested your treasure. Ah. When I see the way people in the city of praise, when we are doing something, and I announce it on this altar that we want to do something, somebody told me that the reason why people give is because when we say we want to do something, they see it. I said, no. No, that's not why. Maybe... Maybe it is. I said the reason why people give to stuff. Their consideration number one is of God. It's about God. I have never seen anybody come and say. Please what are you doing with this? Because those who give. They give it. They release it. They see what they what they're given to. But the release it because it's about God. And why is it about God? Because they come back and give testimonies. <laughs> Even for those ones who don't want to come to the front, they bombard me with testimonies. Because no, they know that the fingers of God are in this one. Keep Serving God. Keep worshiping Him. Sometimes you work a night shift. And you get off at 7 o'clock. And it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. To come to church. Come. You're coming for yourself. You're coming for people who are connected to you. Come. 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 Because your coming is a statement. You are making to God that God, my life is all about you. I surrender. Surrender. Let it go. Let all go. Hey. Let all go. Let all go. Let all go. I grabbed an understanding in my walk with God that all the things we are crazy about, those things are transient. <laughs> They're what? Transient. A temporary. A temporary. I used to keep my dad's Agbada. The Agbada they gave me when he passed, when he died, was one of the, 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 the clothes that he cherished so much. This party, this celebration, somebody's doing this. The garment they gave me was one of his choice garments. And I looked at it and I put it on. My dad did not make that garment for me. He made it for himself. But he is no more. And somebody else is wearing it. And it's me. And all of this. All of this, all of the homes, <laughs> all of the cars, and all the money that we have. Uh, savings account for your children. Who, 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 who is sleeping when you are working? Or playing basketball when you are working. It's not about that. It's about the totality of our being surrendered in God. 
that is what this is all about. Listen to me, and I'm rounding up now. A good pastor rounds up 2022, eh? Once, okay. A good pastor rounds up once. I don't want to lose my job. She has, she has spoken. Acts 10. Hmm. Acts 10 verses 1 to 4. Let's stand up on our feet. Let's stand up on our feet, please. Acts 10 verses 1 to 4. My generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. My generation shall Acts chapter 10. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Go ahead, go ahead, sir. A devout man, a devout man, and one who feared God with all his house. And he gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Verse 4. Hello, sir. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. Listen to me. It was a long season of this man giving and praying. And now the angel of the Lord now came to him and said, You have not given in vain. You have not prayed in vain. Every night when you wake up and you are crying to me, I heard you. Anytime when you could not even open your mouth but your heart was praying, I heard you. Anytime you were giving your last, like that woman in 2 Kings chapter 4, I saw it. I saw the time you gave in pain. I saw the time you gave in agony. I saw the time you gave when you didn't have nothing to give, but you gave. He said, all those things, the arms and the prayer, so they have come up into the storehouse of God. Your prayers and your kingdom work, everything is in the storehouse of God who is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I am praying. Bible says, Bible says, heaven remembered Cornelius. And I am praying for people here this morning. And people who are watching us online. That God is not going to forget your labor of love. And not just that. Whoever is forgetting to reward you as a reason of your prayer and your giving. Bible says the heart of kings are in the hands of the Lord. And like the course of the river, God turns it wherever he wants to. I pray this morning in the name of Jesus, those who have forgotten you, they will remember you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am praying a prayer of remembrance. You are not forgotten. You will be remembered. And I'm praying that in this season of new song, in this season of new song, all unanswered prayers will be answered. All situations that have not been attended to will be attended to by heaven. Your life will become the focus of heaven for approval. In the name of Jesus Christ, a season of new song is a season of breakthrough. I declare that over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who hold your blessings, they will release them. Those who hold your position, they will let go of them. 
those who are in charge of what will put you in charge of your life, they will let go of your possession. In the name of Jesus Christ, every gaping hole of disappointment in your life will be filled by God's timely intervention. In the name of Jesus Christ, I make a decree that disappointment will take the next flight out of your life. Sorrow will not sign in to visit you in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. It takes God of new song. For all good things that you may have lost, I am praying to God that heaven will replace them in the name of Jesus. And when God replaces them, God is replacing them with the best in the name of Jesus Christ. If you lost some money, God will replace them with the best. If you lost some money, God will replace them with the best. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you lost a relationship, God will replace it with the best. Oh, maybe there's somebody here who has lost a business. God will replace it with the best in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't need to cry over them. God will replace them with the best in the name of Jesus Christ. If you lost an opportunity, don't cry over it. The best is on its way for you in the name of Jesus Christ. God is not silent. He will not be silent over you. He will not be silent over your children. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give to your bosom in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to hold the hand of somebody next to you and say, Father God in heaven, I agree with my brother. In this month, we are singing a new song, a new song, a new song, a new song in our homes song in our family in the name of Jesus Christ pray for them and say Lord God of heaven I decree that your children are singing new song new song of uplifting new song of uplifting new song of uplifting new song you will sing a new song regarding your children regarding your health regarding your career regarding your business I decree a new song for you I decree a new song for you. In the name of Jesus, I decree. Pray for them, pray for them. In the next two minutes, pray for them. Say, my brother, I'm praying for you, my sister. You will see the end of your trouble. You will see the end of your trouble. In the name of Jesus. You will see the end of what troubles you. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? shall come to a screeching hold in the name of Jesus pray for them say my brother I'm praying for you God will put money in your hands God will put joy in your spirit God will cause your mouth to sing it will fill your mouth with laughter in the name of Jesus Christ nobody will hurt you nobody will harm you in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray I pray the scripture and we close Isaiah 35 verse 10 look at this Bible says and the ransom of the Lord shall come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy shall be upon their head he said they shall obtain joy and glad gladness and sorrows and sign shall flee away sorrow and sign will flee from your home it will flee from your life Listen to what that scripture said. It said, you are coming to Zion with songs. That is, you are coming before the feet of the master with songs of testimony. Somebody say, I received that. I received that. Say, I am coming to Zion with songs of testimony. Say, I am coming to the feet of the master with songs of testimony. Sorrow will flee sign will flee pain will flee sickness will flee disappointment will flee in the name of jesus whatever is not of god shall flee he shall take this next flight out of my life in the name of jesus thank you our everlasting father blessed be your holy name lord god of heaven we just thank you for the word thank you for this moment thank you for this season thank you for your promises for your people eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the thoughts of man what God is about to do for them that love him 
you are entering your people up, up, upward mobility, upward mobility, upward mobility. The devil can do nothing about it. Upward mobility, upward mobility. The devil can do nothing about it. Upward mobility, upward mobility. Your people are moving on up, moving on up in every areas of their life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we say amen seven times, please? Amen. 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 Let's give him a clap offering. Hallelujah. Let's give him a clap offering. Hallelujah. I am a promise. Can we put our right hand on our chest? I am affirmation. I am not what people say I am. I am who God says I am. I am undefeatable. I am indomitable. I am unconquerable. Nothing else in my mouth but laughter. Nothing else in my spirit but joy. Nothing else in my confession but testimonies. On top I belong. On top I stay, on top I reign and rule. There is more to me, there is more in me. The best of me is yet to be heard and seen. I am not what people say I am. I am who God says I am in Jesus' name. Can we share the grace and fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely His goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the